Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine still under review this morning. And maybe sees Faith Abube in Washington, why the CDC advisory panel decided to keep the temporary pause going. Coming up. Outside with live cam, same song, second or third verse. Very muggy start, lots of low clouds out there. We'll see if there's any fog and get an update on our rain and storm chances. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is April 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a good week so far and uh, the rain will be here for a lot of us today. Let's get an update on those spring storm chances. Good morning, Mike Oster Hage. Good morning. Once again, yeah, it's starting off warm, humid. It's going to be different to this afternoon. Yesterday, well up into the mid 80s again, very humid. Today, we've got a little bit of a front moving through here, so that'll kind of put a lid on temperatures, but we do have a chance for uh, more potentially strong strong storms out there. Nothing is showing up as of right now. Uh, temperature 72 again, 14, 15 degrees above normal, basically 68 in comfort, 74 in Castroville. And here's a look at radar. There's nothing in our immediate vicinity, but out to the west out there in the mountains of Mexico, we're starting to see some of these uh, thunderstorms, a uh, couple of showers develop out there, and these are going to start to spread to the uh, east as the morning rolls on. So it looks like there may be a couple of different rounds, some out there to the east this morning and then later on this afternoon as another disturbance moves on through here. Storm Prediction Center has a good chunk of the area under a severe threat. The marginal risk, the green area, and then the slight risk. So this would be like a one on the scale. This is a, a two, and that does include kind of the northwestern half of Bear County uh, along I-35 and then out into portions of the Hill Country. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat. Of course, high winds are possible as well, and that's going to be later on this afternoon. Oak still on the high side. About the same as what it was the previous day, light amounts of everything else. This morning, temperature is going to stay pretty much steady, as has always been the case. A couple of showers and thunderstorms will try and pop up out to the west. It's going to be breezy this morning as well. Then we have somewhat of a front trying to slide down through here from the northeast. So that's going to hold temperatures roughly mid 70s today. And we'll have the chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Still rain tomorrow. Temperatures go back up, hot and humid. Then we get that break by the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, early in the morning. Anything going on? Well, early in the morning, uh, Micah, as you say, good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. We are seeing some, a few raindrops on some of the uh, trans guide cameras, but I wanted to point this one out. This is Loop 410 at Marbach this morning. We've had that construction again on Loop 410 on the uh, west side as we uh, head over to uh, the wall here. But these uh, vehicles that were here, they were just uh, in these lanes and they were just on the move here. So uh, we'll see what's going on with that. Maybe, perhaps, it might be wrapping up a little bit earlier this morning than it has for the rest of the week. Again, this is uh, Loop 410 uh, on the, the west side. They've been doing uh, this construction work this week, uh, primarily between military and uh, 151, but some other parts of 410 have had some construction work as well. The only other big issue across uh, the region right now is south of downtown on 35, seeing this uh, big slowdown here approaching military drive. You're down to 13 miles per hour. So taking a look at the 35 travel times, of course, again, northeast side looking good. But this is outbound, so if you're heading a southbound out of downtown, it'll take you 17 minutes right now to get to Loop 410. Certainly an unusual delay. We'll check more into that in our next update, and that's coming up. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. A CDC advisory board has decided against recommending a restart of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The experts on the board say they need more information about the rare blood clots that have been reported. ABC's Faith Abube has more on the decision and what's next. This morning, across the country, the Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine remains packed away. A temporary pause still in place. A CDC advisory panel deciding a vote to recommend lifting it would be premature. By having a little more robust information, I, I think we can be much more confident in how we talk about um, the safety of this vaccine. The board asking for more data about the six women who developed a rare blood clot disorder less than two weeks after receiving the shot. 
One of them, a 45-year-old woman from Virginia, has died. Officials say some of the women have pre-existing conditions, but none known to cause blood clots. The experts are looking to see if there are any common factors linking the cases. It is a tough decision uh, to make at this time because we really need as many vaccines as possible. We really don't know for sure that only young women are affected, and we need another week or so to find out if that is the case. In a newly released statement, Johnson & Johnson saying in part, we continue to believe in the positive benefit risk profile of our vaccine. Some doctors agree. Dr. Ashish Jha, dean of Brown University School of Public Health, slamming the CDC decision on Twitter, saying, quote, we're in a pandemic. Short pause to alert folks is reasonable. Waiting when it's unlikely to change what we know is not. Meantime, worries about vaccinations lagging while the virus rages in Michigan. Since last week, COVID deaths have spiked 39 percent. ICUs are seeing 25 percent more patients. The Biden administration says there are still enough vaccines available for every adult American. Meantime, the CDC panel hoping to make a decision on the J&J shots within the next 10 days. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And here's where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. 252 new COVID cases were confirmed along with six new deaths. Numbers now are on a downward trend in our local hospitals. We have now dropped below the 200 patient mark. 70 COVID-19 patients are in the intensive care unit and 32 are on ventilators. VIA will hold its fifth annual job fair today. The company hopes to hire more drivers and mechanics as they anticipate an increase in ridership this year. Our Stephen Cavazos is live outside of VIA headquarters just north of downtown with what we can expect. Good morning, Stephen. Hey there, Mark. Good morning. Well, VIA says in a statement that they expect to increase uh, frequency and reliability on several key routes around San Antonio and Bear County, which is why they want to bring on more drivers and mechanics to meet that anticipated need for more riderships, and that demand is expected to increase later this year. Now, VIA currently has over 2,000 employees, that is, more than 1,000 bus and van operators and over 260 vehicle maintenance workers. Now, this year's event will be virtual, but will still give people that opportunity to apply for jobs. Now, this event will be happening from 9 this morning and run till noon. It can be accessed on your phone or on Zoom, and applications are currently being accepted online. You can also head over to our website at ksat.com for more information. Now, the company will also provide paid training for new drivers, and those classes begin every two weeks. No prior experience is needed. However, for mechanics, at least three years of prior education or experience is definitely required. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. Time now is 437 and about 72 degrees right now. So ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you why the United States is expected to announce new sanctions against Russia later today. And it was a close one for the San Antonio Spurs last night against the Toronto Raptors, but they just couldn't get things going at the end. Highlights coming up. And outside with live cam, we'll get an update from Mike Ostrange of what to expect we as we are now one day closer to the weekend. You're watching GMSA. Good morning headlines. The Biden administration preparing to announce new sanctions in response to a massive Russian hacking campaign that breached vital federal agencies as well as for election interference. The sanctions have been foreshadowed for weeks by the administration. They would represent the first retaliatory action announced against the Kremlin for last year's hack known as the Solar Winds breach. The measures are to be announced later today. And drug overdoses in the U.S. reached the highest levels on record during the COVID pandemic. Experts believe opioids share much of the blame for that. According to preliminary CDC data, more than 87,000 Americans died from an overdose over the one-year period ending in September of 2020. That's an almost 30% jump from the year before. It's also the highest number since the CDC started tracking those deaths in 1999. The report says the main driver behind those deaths were synthetic opioids along with heroin and prescription painkillers. Your tax calculators can rest easy today. For most of us this year, April 15th is not tax day. The IRS has delayed its federal tax filing deadline for the most part until May 17th. The delay gives individual filers, tax preparers, and the IRS a chance to look at any changes that may affect this year's filing. There are two exceptions. Anyone who pays estimated taxes, like many small business owners, still must make their usual payment by April 15th. And victims of February's winter storms who live here in Texas 
as well as Oklahoma and Louisiana, have until June 15th to file taxes. Let's talk Spurs. DeMar DeRozan spent nine years in Toronto before he was traded to San Antonio and had a chance to face his former team last night again. Derek White led San Antonio with 25 points. Patty Mills added 23. And DeRozan kept the Spurs in it with some fourth quarter scoring, but it wasn't enough. The team ultimately lost the inside game. Raptors beat the Spurs 117-112. to 112. One of the Raptors' key players, I believe, is Eddie Gillespie, scored nine points in the early minutes of the second half, helping Toronto move ahead by nine. Largest lead for either team till late in the fourth. Spurs answer with a 13-3 run, capped by a pair of threes by uh, White to regain the lead, but Toronto pulled ahead late in the game thanks to a quick dunk, followed by a fast three-pointer and turnaround jumper. Having completed a five-game road trip, Spurs will play 10 of their next 14 games on the road. Up next, Spurs come home. They take on the Trailblazers tomorrow night. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Time now is 4.43 and 72 degrees. Still ahead, you may have heard of those so-called flushable wipes, but are they really okay to use, or will they cause plumbing problems in the future? Also next, what a new study is saying when it comes to coronavirus on airplanes and what leaving the middle seat open does for stopping the spread of infection. And welcome back. It's about 446. A new CDC report finds keeping the middle seat free on some airplanes can reduce passenger exposure to COVID-19 by more than 50%. ABC's Victor Okendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the question on the mind of every air traveler. When it comes to filling the seats of a plane, how full is too full? The CDC is reigniting the debate over middle seats, releasing a new report suggesting that having passengers sit farther apart on planes could help reduce exposure to viruses like COVID-19 from 23 to 57 percent. The CDC found an effect even without the mask, but it wasn't the real world. And obviously when people are in flight and they eat, they remove their masks and they may not put it back on immediately. So therein is the danger is that they sit there, they may talk to their uh, colleague, their family, and they may generate particles. So if we take this and actually put masks on them and run the study, imagine what, could it, what we could find here. We'll have much more on this study, plus a closer look at the rising airfares coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami. Well, now that we're past the toilet paper shortage, there may be another problem in your bathroom, flushable wipes. They can cause havoc to the sewer system. So now something else is becoming a popular alternative. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains. They might say flushable or septic safe, but any type of wipe can mean problems for sewer and septic systems. They don't break down like toilet paper does, and these videos show what can happen. If you think there's got to be another way, consider the bidet. Bidets are having their moment. The initial cost of a bidet seat might be steep, but... Wipes are certainly cheaper than getting a bidet, but some of the plumbers that we spoke to said that wipes are prone to clogs, even the flushable ones. Bidet seats are different from a freestanding bidet. A seat attaches to an existing toilet and uses clean water from your toilet supply line and electricity to produce a stream of warm water. Many come standard with an adjustable nozzle, a heated seat, and adjustable water temperature, all operated by a remote or control panel. If you're reasonably handy, most can be installed DIY. Consumer Reports got personal and asked people for feedback. Bidet seat users liked this Brondell Swash 1000 and gave it top scores for installation and usability. There are also basic seats that don't use electricity, but no electricity means no warm water. Some non-electric seats can attach to your hot water line, so it's a good idea to check. Nonetheless, many happy bidet users gave the Tushy Classic top scores even without the warm water. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yep, a lot to think about. Yeah, sixty dollars versus six hundred for the yeah. fancy warm water option. Yeah, <laughs> Americans really we we don't do bidets. I mean, I know it's kind of a, a Europe and and part of Asia thing. But uh, mm -hmm. when the pandemic started last year, they were starting to sell a lot on or the parts, I guess, on you know Amazon and in different yeah you know, retailers were well, seeing the 
you know, the sales went up. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad Marilyn gave us some options. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King, who is following some construction around the streets. Yeah, this uh, the west side of uh, Loop 410, and we also had this issue, Stephanie Mark, here at uh, 35 and uh, South Cross. But looking uh, at uh, Transguide there, it looks like it has uh, cleared up. So we'll take a closer uh, look at this over here uh, at the wall. We had a crash in the southbound lanes, and there are some emergency vehicles here. But as you can see at the moment, very quickly, uh, this is cleared up. But according uh, to our map here, there is still a bit of a slowdown uh, coming out of downtown, just past Division and approaching South Cross down to 32 miles per hour. But just a second ago, this was at a dead stop. So uh, that shows that this is getting cleared up and should be getting people on their way uh, for the morning commute. Uh, looking at the uh, rest of the area, not too much else going on, but Stephanie mentioned uh, the construction here on the uh, west side. We've been looking at the uh, Transguide cameras and not really seeing as much activity here. So they might have uh, been able to wrap some of this up a little bit uh, early today. But again, we'll keep an eye on it. There's some construction overnight and there's going to be one more uh, night of this, of course, uh, tomorrow. So we'll keep an eye on that. And, and guys, we are seeing some little raindrops here and there and parts uh, of the area on the Transguide camera. So that's something that drivers should watch out for this morning too. Hey, hey Mike, isn't it Japan where they have like those $3,000 bidets that do everything but make you an omelet in the morning? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think honest. they do. They, I mean, they, they like crazy amount of features offered. Yeah, it's different. What else would you? Never mind. Okay. What else would you need? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, beautiful picture. I love that with the flower and the, you know, the backdrop of those clouds out there. And we're starting off this morning. As uh, Sam mentioned, there may be a couple little um, spits and drizzles here and there. We've got a lot of humidity, very, very warm temperatures. And there are a couple of uh, light little showers. There's only a, sorry about this, only a couple of frames in this loop. But you can see there's just a, maybe a few of them out there in portions of the hill country. This is a little bit of clutter, but you can see there are a couple little uh, spits here and there and then out to the west this is where we have to watch out for some of those uh, storms to start to develop out there to the west of us there's these disturbances which are sliding in coming uh, off the mountains of mexico basically and they're going to run into this warm humid air also there is a feature coming through uh, somewhat of a, a cool front today, not the one for the weekend, obviously, and that's going to help to just sort of trigger things. And so that's why there is the chance for some uh, well, pretty good thunderstorms out to the west. So computer model this morning, you know, yes, it tends to broad brush things, but just a few scattered showers around the area. But what to take note of is the fact that there will be a couple of these thunderstorms developing out to the west throughout the morning hours. So that's what we have to watch out for. And then as we go into the afternoon, more is going to be developing primarily up to the north, but we'll still have some in portions of the hill country and sliding on down in toward dinner time. And so that's where some of these may become strong to uh, potentially severe, and that will continue to work its way on out of here. So it'd be like a late afternoon, early evening threat for that. Tomorrow morning, we have a few more of these showers left over some throughout the rest of the day, maybe a couple of more thunderstorms tomorrow. Then as we go into tomorrow night, watch as we get in toward about news time Friday night and this line right along there. That's the front moving on through, so that'll pull down the cooler air, but we'll still have some of this kind of overrunning rain and still keep some showers around here. Uh, then tomorrow, or excuse me, then on Saturday, humidity is going to stay very, very high today as well as going into tomorrow, and it's actually probably going to get a little bit higher. And then there is the outlook for the severe potential later on this afternoon. Most of the area has the marginal risk and that slight risk even including northwestern uh, Bear County up into portions of the hill country. Again, large hail is going to be the biggest threat with us later on this afternoon. So the forecast today, maybe a couple little you know, sprinkles here and there this morning. A few showers, a couple of thunderstorms primarily out to the west developing. And then this afternoon, more of them around showers, uh, thunderstorms. Also, it's going to be breezier this morning. Wind is going to be uh, picking up a little bit more. Back up into the heat tomorrow, 85 more showers and thunderstorms possible. Then we get the front moving through here, so that'll cool us down for the weekend and rain chances will begin to taper off. We'll still have some showers around on Saturday, but we'll have to keep an eye out again this afternoon. Let's see if uh, this forecast meets with Stephanie's overall approval. Yes, I think we need the rain. Thank you very much. <laughs> rain, but hopefully nothing too strong. That was a close one. Thank you very much, Mike and Steph. Uh, 454 on your Thursday morning. And still ahead, fans are reacting to the newest Fast and Furious trailer. Plus, a documentary featuring a summer camp for kids with disabilities is getting some Oscar buzz.
New details on a documentary featuring programs to help people with disabilities, plus a new Fast and Furious trailer getting some hype. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A small army of the handicapped have occupied this building for the past 11 days. So this could be a significant year for people with disabilities at the Oscars. Among the nominees, the documentary Crip Camp, about a summer camp for teens with disabilities. And director and co-star Jim Lebrecht, who is in a wheelchair, says with all the talk about representation, there's still a lot of work to be done. The whole entertainment industry needs to look at what they've been doing for diversity and inclusion with other marginalized communities and really apply those same lessons, learns, and programs to people with disabilities. The Oscars air April 25th on ABC. I'm gay, and I came to terms with that earlier this year and have been processing it. After former The Bachelor star Colton Underwood revealed to the world yesterday on Good Morning America that he is gay, now comes word that he's making a reality show about his life for Netflix. Variety says the series will be about Underwood navigating his new life as an out gay man. A lot of people excited about the craziness of the new Fast and Furious trailer. The rocket car, a big caterpillar thing, and of course, Dame Helen Mirren. Built to the metal. F9 is scheduled to hit theaters June 25th. And happy birthday to Luis Fonzi. The Despacito singer is 43 today. While Harry Potter star Emma Watson is 31. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 458, about 70 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to take a look at what's on the schedule today in the case of the Minnesota police officer charged in the shooting death of Dante Wright. Plus, Samsung teasing what it calls the most powerful Galaxy device. We'll tell you about its debut at a special event later this month, ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, candidates for San Antonio mayor continue to give their vision for the future of the Alamo City. Plus, the former Minnesota police officer charged in the shooting death of Dante Wright set to meet a judge today. May have a sprinkle or two out there this morning. We'll get updated on our rain chances. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is April 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I guess we're looking forward to a little bit of a cooler temperature. That's right. Mike says another frontal system is going to be in our area sooner than later. Here's an update. Yeah, this is a kind of a, a weak front, not the, the big one. We still have that big one coming through this weekend, but this one at least is going to hold temperatures uh, down somewhat later on today. We'll only be in uh, roughly the mid 70s as opposed to 80s like yesterday and again tomorrow. Anyway, 70 right now. Uh, plenty of humidity once again. Two points up in the, uh, the mid 60s out there and uh, wind out of the northeast. And so that'll kind of keep that cooler air in place with that northeasterly wind. So we're looking at about 76 for a high temperature later on today, which is actually a slightly below normal high temperature. The aquifer yesterday went down four tenths of a foot and the allergens. We do have still a lot of oak out there, although it was pretty steady from the, the previous day's reading. We're basically right in the, the heart of oak season. Now, as far as radar, we do have a couple of little sprinkles that are showing up on radar. It's kind of hard to see. There's just a few of them out there. As you can see, just those little um, specks here and there. So you yeah, don't be surprised if you see one or two of them. Uh, Sam said he saw a couple on some of the uh, trans guide cameras. Going to talk about that in a second. You can see just a few of these little spots. This is some uh, clutter right there around the radar site. What we're watching, though, this morning is out here to the west as these start to develop uh, right there off the mountains of Mexico and coming across the Rio Grande. And so there is the chance for some of these thunderstorms to develop this morning out in portions of the hill country. Then another shot at some uh, showers and thunderstorms later on today and also some of those the potential is there again for them to be severe. Most of the area is under a severe threat. The green area marginal risk and then that bumps up to the slight risk, including the kind of northwestern half of Bear County down toward Uvalde right along 35 and then out in portions of the hill country. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat. Of course, some high winds with some of the storms can't be ruled out as well. So a couple of, uh, you know, sprinkles, showers here and there this morning, and then we will see a few of those thunderstorms trying to develop later on in the hill country.
country way out west this morning. Also, it's going to be breezy. Then this afternoon, more showers and thunderstorms. Another round developing, maybe strong to potentially severe. Tomorrow, more showers, a couple of more storms out there, and it's going to warm back up. Hot and humid, mid 80s, plenty of humidity tomorrow. Then the front comes on through here late tomorrow night into the weekend. It's going to be cooler. We've got some showers left over on Saturday, but really nice temperatures over the weekend. Details, just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Any more uh, raindrops on the lenses out there? Yeah, we do uh, have some, Mike, and we'll show you that in just a moment. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. Things are mostly quiet on the uh, roadways right now, but we still had uh, this incident on 35 uh, southbound. There's a crash overnight, so we'll take a, a closer look at that as we head over here to the wall and you can see that things have improved greatly on 35 so this can come off the board here pretty uh, shortly we did have a, a crash uh, overnight and so that is uh, caused some major delays on 35 southbound but within the past half hour or so this was all cleared up and traffic is starting to flow once again looking at parts of the area here in our traffic times map 26 minutes if you're coming in on 35 from new Braunfels, 17 minutes if you're coming in from the lytle area remember yesterday we had some major delays uh, down there because of a crash there uh, 410 and at 35 but now it's back to normal this morning 25 minutes if you're coming in on i-10 from the bernie area if we mentioned some of uh, the raindrops on Transguy. This is a uh, 35 at Topper Wine. Traffic is building, but you can kind of see the moisture here. So just watch out for that and be safe throughout the morning. And I'll have another update coming up. Thank you, sir. In Minnesota, the former police officer who fatally shot Dante Wright will face a judge today. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. Oh. Overnight violence erupting for a fourth consecutive night outside the police department in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, amid outrage over the death of Dante Wright. The 20-year-old unarmed black man shot and killed by an officer in what the department called an accidental discharge. Demonstrators tried to climb the fence that now protects the police station and threw bottles and fireworks at officers. Officers returning fire with flashbangs and rubber bullets. The unrest coming just hours after the former police officer who shot Wright was released from jail. Kim Potter posted $100,000 bond late Wednesday. And later today, she'll face a judge to be charged with second-degree manslaughter. Family members and community activists have called for Potter to be charged with murder. Not over a mistake! Over murder! Wright's death Sunday came after police tried to arrest him for an outstanding warrant stemming from misdemeanor charges. Body camera video shows him trying to flee. According to police officials, Officer Potter thought she had grabbed her taser, but instead pulled her gun, firing the fatal shot. If convicted of second-degree manslaughter, Potter could face up to 10 years in prison. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Last night, former Councilman Greg Brockhouse took the virtual stage for the second edition of our mayoral forums. This will be the second time he faces incumbent Ron Nirenberg in the race for mayor. Brockhouse touched on several topics, including the pandemic, saying he would have kept the city open while keeping science in mind. He also disagreed with mandatory mask wearing. Brockhouse also says he disagrees with a proposition that could remove collective bargaining between the city and police union, but he also says he's for firing bad police officers. Leadership moments like this call for just taking a stand and telling people where you are. I support the police department. I think we should fire bad cops. I also believe that we should worry about more than just those bad officers over the last 10 years. We should worry about the young men and women of color. Brock House also spoke about CPS Energy and what he thinks needs to happen following the February winter storm. You can take a look at the entire forum right now on KSAT.com. And tonight you're going to get a chance to hear from mayoral candidate Denise Gutierrez Homer. That will start on air at 630 during our KSAT Q&A. And then the forum will begin online at KSAT.com at 7 p.m. 508 via hoping more people will hop on for a ride. The mass transit provider for San Antonio and Bear County will hold its fifth annual virtual job fair today. The company is looking to hire more drivers and mechanics as they prepare for an increase in riders this year. Stephen Cavazos is live outside via headquarters this morning. And Stephen, how can people join the event? 
Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, that event does kick off later this morning at 9 and will run to noon this afternoon. And all people really need is just their phone or a Zoom application. And logging on will be really easy. And once they do, they'll have access to many opportunities that could land them a job right here with VIA. Now, the company does, or some of those jobs actually include mechanics and bus operators. And right now, the company has over 2,000 employees, more than 1,000 bus and van operators, and over 260 vehicle maintenance workers. But they hope to bring on more employees as they increase frequency and reliability on several key routes and anticipate an increase in rider demand. Now, the company will also provide training for new drivers and classes do begin every two weeks. No experience is required, but mechanics should have at least three years of experience or education. Now, that applications are now being accepted right now online. You can always head over to our website at ksat.com to learn more, but don't forget this virtual job fair does begin later today starting at 9 and will wrap up around noon this afternoon. We'll have more later this morning on GMSA. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. More traffic authority coverage now as more students head to in-person classes. School zones are a bit busier again. And that's led to some questions from our viewers for our SAQ segment. Our Samuel King is here to answer them. Good morning again. Stephanie, viewers had questions about why some school zones have different speed limits than others. And there are also questions about enforcement. As for that first question, speed limits in school zones are usually 20 miles per hour, but there are some exceptions. Some could be as low as 15 miles per hour in some residential streets and up to 30 miles per hour if a school is on a busy road like De Zavala. Paul Berry with the San Antonio Public Works Department says the default speed limit on those roads is often higher. We'll usually reduce to 20 miles an hour or 15 miles below the default speed limit. You don't want to go too far down from the default speed limit because you'll have a lot of people just slamming on their brakes and that's something you don't want either. And while it is usually a municipal government that sets the speed limit, it is up to police to enforce it. And SAPD tells me it enforces school zones depending on the choice of a given school district. They strongly encourage citizens to be mindful when driving into school zones, especially as they're a bit busier right now. And no matter what the speed limit is, you should slow down in those school zones and watch out for children and those helping them cross the street, even if police aren't around. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. 5.11 right now, about 70 degrees. And still ahead, a closer look at Instagram's newest feature that lets users choose if they want to see likes. Up next, why local doctors are encouraging parents to plan ahead when it comes to getting critical care for kids during an unexpected emergency. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are at about 70 degrees right now, but we're expecting it to kind of stay that way as opposed to dipping into the 80s. We're going to be right back. Five fifteen. Good morning. Welcome back. Nobody likes to think about emergencies, but having a plan ahead of time could be a life saving step in getting critical care. Dr. Jendi Haug is an American, excuse me, an emergency doctor at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. She says having a plan in place can allow a parent to focus on the needs of their child instead of logistics in an emergency. When things are scary, sometimes it can be hard to think. And so if you have already had a plan in place that you know where you're going and how you're going to get there and who's going to help you, then that just makes that one step a little bit easier. Dr. Haug says having one less thing to worry about can help you get your child expert help sooner. And time now is 515 and it's about 71 degrees right now. Coming up, we'll show you Amazon's new wireless earbuds that are smaller, cheaper and have better noise cancellation. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. 
Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In today's Tech Bytes, a new option for Instagram when it comes to your likes. The site is trying out a feature allowing users to choose if they want to hide likes on their own posts or on the posts of pages they follow. The company has tested hiding likes in the past. They say it's a way to lessen pressure when posting. Amazon is out with new wireless earbuds that are smaller and cheaper than the previous version. The company also says the new Echo Buds have improved noise cancellation. They'll be available next month with a launch price starting at $99. And Samsung is out with a highly produced tease for what it says will be the most powerful Galaxy device ever. There's speculation it is a new Galaxy Book laptop. Whatever it is, the new product will be revealed at a Samsung event on April 28th. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 520. Well, there's a little bit of rain out there. Samuel King wanted to see how the drivers are doing so far. Uh, pretty good so far, uh, Stephanie. Not too many drivers on the road. A few uh, incidents uh, here and there. You see that crash icon there on 35. We should be uh, taking that off here pretty soon because it appears that that crash has been cleared. But we do have a stall on the uh, northwest side as we head uh, over to uh, the wall uh, this morning. And this is on I-10. Uh, just north of a 1604, but not really impacting your travel times at all. If you're coming into downtown uh, from Bernie, 24 minutes, 25 minutes heading outbound. And then once you're inside 1604, 12 to 13 minutes between downtown and 1604 on I-10. And here is a look at Transguide. This is I-10 at the rim, the area where that stalled vehicle uh, was reported, and we're not seeing it right now. It appears that has been cleared. Uh, traffic building a little bit, but does look a little bit cloudy out there, so just something to keep in mind this morning, guys. Thank you very much, Samuel. Mike, uh, the, the oak caterpillars are everywhere these days. Oh, yeah. thought I saw one the other day and went to flick it <laughs> off, and it was it was a ladybug, and you don't do Aww, that to ladybugs because no. they're supposed to be good luck. Yeah, they well, are, and yeah. I see you have one right there. Case in point. Great little picture. I love that. So cool looking. Yeah, I, those are the ones that you don't mind because a lot of people don't like bugs and everything. Ladybug gets on it's like, okay. Yeah. Not, not a big deal. So thank you for the KSAT Connect picture. All right, as uh, Sam was just talking about, a lot of clouds. Uh, yeah, it's not a little cloudy. It's a lot bit cloudy out there. And, uh, you know, they're, it's kind of fuzzy in places, the, the view, just because of all the humidity. And also a couple little sprinkles have been showing up. Not really that much on radar. Uh, just, you know, here's some, some clutter right there around the radar site. We've got a few of these showers that are developing out here in portions of the hill country near U Valley. And then also over there in the mountains of Mexico. Go. And out here to the west, we're going to have to watch it for this morning for some of these showers to develop and maybe a couple of thunderstorms out to the west this morning. And then again, a little bit closer in a couple of spots there in portions of Bandera County, everything sliding up to the north and here in town. Yeah, just a few little uh, spots. Again, this this is just clutter around the radar site, but there are a few little areas where maybe the rain is heavy enough to be picked up on radar. It's not heavy by any stretch, just a little bit of light stuff out there. But uh, computer model again wants to keep some of these showers around throughout the day off and on. And then there's those thunderstorms trying to develop out there to the west this morning. And those will kind of go through their cycle and sort of fizzle out, if you will. But there will be more developing later on this afternoon up there in portions of the hill country working its way to the west and then coming into right along the I-35 corridor just about by dinner time and then working off to the east. We'll still have a couple of more showers left over it overnight tomorrow morning and then a few more thunderstorms trying to develop then throughout the day tomorrow. Now tomorrow evening right along that line there. That's the front that's going to move on through here. That'll bring in the cooler air, but it won't bring an end to the rain immediately because we'll still have some of that overrunning rain around here throughout a good chunk of the day on Saturday. It won't be a washout, but it must, will be much, much cooler on Saturday. Now, as far as the humidity, it is going to drop down significantly once that front moves through, but it's going to stay very high today and especially tomorrow with the higher humidity, unstable atmosphere, some other factors coming into it. That 
that is uh, what's prompting the severe threat. Good chance for or decent chance the slight risk out in portions of the hill country along I-35 Northwest Bear County and then marginal risk elsewhere. So a good chunk of the area is under the uh, severe threat later on today. As far as this morning, a couple little sprinkles out there, damp spots on the roads here and there, maybe a few uh, more showers, a couple of thunderstorms developing out to the west and uh, 72 today at noon. Temperatures really aren't going to be moving all that much. We have a little bit of a front sliding on through here, which is going to hold things sort of in check. So we will have uh, only mid 70s, actually a little bit below normal today. Showers and a few thunderstorms out there and then tomorrow heat comes back into the picture and very humid 85 more showers thunderstorms then that front drops down so a 20 degree difference in temperatures between tomorrow and Saturday mid 60s also on Sunday more showers on Saturday a little bit lesser chance a little more sunshine on Sunday but today once again we got to watch out for maybe some strong storms this afternoon well, watch out for it, but what a difference from Friday and Saturday. Yeah, yeah that front's going to be really nice because it's getting humid out there. Yes, it is. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 524 on your Thursday. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, a quick look at the latest Fast and Furious film. Plus, Renee Zellweger is hitting the links in a new movie. Today's entertainment segment could be confused with a sports report. There's golf, tennis, and some really fast cars. Here seeing is David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. There's June 25th. <laughs> Renee Zellweger is hitting the links. The Oscar winner will star in the comedy The Back Nine as a former golfer who quit the game to support her husband going pro. When he leaves her 25 years later, she digs out her clubs and tries to make a comeback. One thing I love about tennis is being out there and it's the one time I don't want to hear anyone tell me anything and you have to figure out, you have to problem solve. Serena Williams has made a match with Amazon Studios. The tennis legend will develop scripted and unscripted TV projects, beginning with a docu-series about her professional and personal life. Serving up the showbiz news in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 528. And still ahead on GMSA, protests continue in Minnesota as the former police officer charged with second-degree manslaughter gets ready to face a judge this afternoon. Now hiring Bush wants to give your dog a job drinking beer. Details on what your pup needs on his or her resume coming up. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, April 15th. Mike Oster H has an update on a little weak cool front that's going to be moving through the area. What's the time frame for that, Mike? And what could happen next? Well, it's going to be later on this morning. You know, we're starting off right now with very warm temperatures, a lot of humidity out there. Temperatures are going to be held in check today. Uh, we'll stay right around mid 70s, and so we won't go up all that much throughout the day. It's also going to help to be uh, with the triggering of some more showers and thunderstorms later on uh, this afternoon out to the west. We've got a lot of clouds this morning. Nothing is showing up in this picture, but we have seen a few of the uh, trans guide cameras. I'm going to show you this in a second where there's been just a couple little sprinkles out there so the roads could be damp in spots 70 right now a lot of humidity 2.65 measure moisture in the atmosphere which uh, yeah you, you notice it when you step outside and the wind has shifted around now to the northeast at 10 miles per hour it's going to be a little bit on the breezy side this morning as well Radar, there's not really a heck of a lot, of, heck of a lot out there. That's the uh, clutter right around the radar site, and as you can see, maybe a couple little little speckles that start to show up here and there. Not much, and then a few more more pronounced uh, showers are developing out there in the mountains of Mexico working their way up into Val Verde County. And this is where we're going to have to watch out out to the west this morning for some of these showers and storms to develop. And then again later on this afternoon, primarily in the hill country, obviously the, the greatest threat is going to be further north of our area, but there is that slight risk uh, right along I-35 into northwest Bear County over toward Uvalde. A high, excuse me, large hail with a little bit of high winds are the, going to be the biggest threat. And then another, well, m almost most of the area is under some sort of severe threat. The marginal risk is the uh, green shaded area, so a little bit lesser chance for strong to potentially severe storms later on today. Oak is still high, 2570. Stayed about, uh, about the same as what it was the previous day, maybe went up a little bit. So we'll have a couple of uh, showers around here. Showers, maybe a few thunderstorms, especially off to the west this morning, and then later on this afternoon, showers and some uh, thunderstorms some potentially strong or severe 76 for a high temperature wind out of the northeast 10 to 20 miles per hour so we get a slight break in the temperatures today 
back to the heat and a lot of humidity tomorrow. More rain and then the next front moves through. That's going to bring in some nice cool temperatures for the weekend. Details just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King and uh, anything big going on? Nothing uh, too big going on, Mike. This is a uh, 35 at Topper Wine this morning. Traffic building and you uh, may be able to see a few uh, raindrops there on the lens as we head over to wall, give you a better view uh, of this. Again, you can see there the moisture that Mike was talking about. So that's just something to watch out for as we move through uh, the morning, not really impacting traffic flow too much at this point. As you can see on the map, a lot of uh, green on the map. And of course, that's what we like to see uh, this time of morning. And the green extends to the, the inbound travel times, uh, 25 minutes from the New Braunfels area on 35, 17 minutes from Lytle, 28 minutes coming in from Seguin on I-10, 24 minutes from Bernie on I-10. 19 minutes from Castroville on US 90. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. It sounds unlikely, but San Antonio police say a shooting victim actually was lucky. The man was only grazed by a bullet that tore into his car. It happened south of downtown near Interstate 35 and Malone Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, was he able to avoid being seriously hurt? Well, he was able to avoid it, and the way it was, it seems, only was luck. It happened at the intersection right here behind me. Police say a bullet went right through the man's trunk and into the back of his seat, yet somehow he walked away with only a bruise on his back. Now, what has everyone else baffled in the meantime is why someone would shoot at him. Police say the man told them he had just left a bar in the area without any problems. He says he was going to stop for gas somewhere else, but didn't feel comfortable there. Instead, he headed toward the Shell station near I-35 in Malone. Police say as he was waiting at the light, someone took aim at him. He then drove to the gas station and called for help. The police say that the man didn't even realize what happened until he felt sort of a sting on his back. But again, they say that he was just bruised by that bullet. The police say because this happened so quickly, the man told them he was not able to get a description of the person who shot him. Reporting live south of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming off another night of protests in Minnesota this afternoon, the former police officer charged with second degree manslaughter and that the death of Dante Wright will face a judge. CNN's Brett Conway has the latest in the case. Dante Wright, the 20 year old shot and killed during a traffic stop Sunday. And every night since then, there have been protests in Brooklyn Center. Well, we're not here seeking revenge, we're simply seeking justice. Today, the former police officer accused of firing the fatal shot will face a judge. Kim Potter has been charged with second degree manslaughter. <laughs> then police chief Tim Gannon said he thought it was an accident. It is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy their taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single bullet. But investigators said the taser is yellow with a black grip and she would have to use her left hand to get it. In other words, they say she should have known the difference. A former federal prosecutor and former Minnesota attorney general explained the charges. So this is essentially a charge that says you are culpably negligent if you create an unreasonable risk and then you consciously disregard that risk to human life. Second degree manslaughter has a presumptive sentence in Minnesota of four years. The maximum is 10 years, along with the possibility of a $20,000 fine if she's convicted. But it's still early. Are there plea discussions going on right now between this particular defendant and the Washington County attorney? And this is still an active investigation. Facts can change, facts can develop, uh, evidence can come in in a case. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A Texas federal judge says the federal government can take private land to build the southern border wall. That's even though the Biden administration might not want it. The eminent domain case over the Cavazos family property started during the Trump administration. President Biden paused border wall construction when he took office and the Justice Department asked for a continuance. The continuance was lifted just yesterday, but immediately before hearing about the case, the judge granted the government's 2020 motion to take the land. 
A big success for Jeff Bezos' airspace, excuse me, aerospace company, Blue Origin announced it successfully completed its 15th consecutive mission to space and back on Wednesday. So on board was Mannequin Skywalker, Blue Origin's test flight dummy. More than 25,000 postcards from Club for the Future also went into space. Club for the Future is a nonprofit founded by Blue Origin before the rocket launched. Employees rehearsed the procedures astronauts will take during real missions. The personnel simulated getting into and out of that rocket and conducting a series of tests from inside. Right now it's just about 540 and we're at about 70 degrees. And so ahead we're going to tell you how you can get your very own bread bowl bike for Earth Day. That's courtesy of Panera. Outside with live cam. Mike's forecast coming up right here on GMSA. With warmer weather and more people getting vaccinated, Americans are proceeding with their travel plans. So if you plan to take a trip, CNN's Mandy Gaither tells us why some experts say travel insurance may be the way to go. Planning a trip, but want to make sure you're covered in case of cancellation? Travel insurance can give consumers a peace of mind. The Better Business Bureau says travel insurance can protect your purchase against potential canceled flights or changed itineraries. But a warning, not all policies will cover cancellations for a health scare or bad weather. But some of what's typically covered includes trip cancellation or delay, lost or stolen luggage, emergency medical assistance, and coverage for rental cars. You want to carefully read the language that is in your coverage policy. You want to find out if you're covered in case of illness or theft, and if the coverage changes if you travel internationally. This is especially important if you or those who you're traveling with have health conditions. The Insurance Information Institute says to expect to pay between 5 to 7 percent of the cost of your trip, and before you buy, do your research on the company. You want to make sure you look for things like possible complaints and reviews. And before buying travel insurance, know the difference between insurance and a cancellation waiver. While waivers provide some trip cancellation protection, they generally include more restrictions. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now is 543 and it's about 71 degrees outside. Still ahead, want your dog to get paid for drinking a special kind of beer? We'll tell you about a job offer from Bush Beer coming up. And welcome back. It's about 546. In your morning consumer headlines, Panera Bread Company is putting carbs and exercise together in celebration of the upcoming Earth Day. The company is giving away 30 bicycles like this one featuring a basket shaped like uh, its signature bread bowl. So to win one of those bikes, you just enter your name at a website up by Panera between Wednesday and April 22nd. Earth Day celebrations will be held next week with the goal of coming up with ideas to address the global climate challenges. This year, organizers will hold live digital events, which can be seen at earthday.org. Spotify is hoping to turn more car radios into smart radios with its new Car Thing. Car Thing is a voice controlled device from Spotify. The Bluetooth connected device allows users to access Spotify without their phone or mobile device. Features a touch screen so you can see what is playing and a dial like most radios. The device can use, be, be used with older cars that do not have built in infotainment systems or phone connections. Users have to subscribe to Spotify service. Car thing is available for about $80. Ambush is offering $20,000 for your dog to drink beer. Well, not exactly real beer, but the brand's special dog brew. It's a canine-friendly, alcohol-free bone broth. The company launched it last year and now wants to expand, so they're looking for an official dog brew taster. If your pup is picked, he or she will become the new CTO, or Chief Tasting Officer. Not only dogs, I'm sorry, not only does the gig come with a $20,000 check, but also pet insurance and free dog brew. So to apply, post a picture of your dog on social media along with their qualifications and the hashtag Bush CTO contest. I'm just imagining pulling up to the drive through at Frost Bank with a check made out to Truman Austin. Do I, yeah. do I co-sign? Does, does he paw print and then I sign underneath? He's like, hey, Dad, this is my money. For dog deposit only? I mean, what do you what do you do with that kind of check? Oh, I don't know. Distribute it, of course. I'll work out the details yeah. later. <laughs> Worrying about it later. Samuel, good morning. I just like that you've already said Truman's going to be the, the chief. Well, of course. 
Cheers. I, I did make kind of an assumption there. My apologies. <laughs> it's okay. Well, yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Truman can do whatever he wants. Uh, looking at uh, travel this morning, things are looking uh, pretty good at this moment, despite uh, some of the, the clouds and maybe some mist in some parts of the area as we head over here uh, to the wall. So not too many incidents at this moment. We did want to tell you something uh, TechStot has going on over the next few weeks. This will be available on the TechStot website beginning at 5 this afternoon. They're talking about expanding FM 1560 on the west side, far western Bear County, west of 1604, uh, from Bandera down to Calabria. Widen it from two to four lanes, add some new bike lanes and sidewalks as well. So they want the public's input on that. Again, that'll be available beginning at 5 uh, this afternoon or evening, if you prefer, and that will run for the next two weeks. So we'll have some reminders of that throughout the next two week period. This in Vandera Road inside 1604 and 410 looks good this morning. Nine minutes in each direction. Here's a look at Transguide 410 at Whirling Ridge, 410 Jackson Keller. Traffic building, but flowing well right now, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Yes. Woodlawn Lake. Yep. I'm Woodlawn assuming. Lake. Another one. Ah, I guessed it this time. Well, I'm, I cheated because I saw that Taylor sent it in. Oh, you well, can. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of make out the uh, silhouette of the lighthouse. Oh, uh -huh, right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's a great mm -hmm. picture. Thank you very much, sir. Love that. That was from a Tuesday evening. You know, the sun with that uh, filtered kind of haze out there. Great looking uh, picture. And <clears throat> speaking of filtered haze. Yeah, that's about what it looks like around much of the area. We've got plenty of clouds and we're not going to see much sunshine uh, this morning nor throughout really the day. We've got all this flow coming in here from the west and there's these disturbances which are coming in here. And as you can see out there in the mountains of uh, Mexico, some of those uh, showers and uh, no thunderstorms as of yet, but we'll have to be watch. Uh, we'll be watching out for some of those to develop. Now here in town, we've got just a couple of little uh, sprinkly showers, but again, it's out there to the west and these are starting to even over about the past hour it's been filling in a little bit more so we'll watch this as it uh, this disturbance out here as it continues to build and then work its way to the east a little bit this morning so around uh, del rio you may see some of these uh, showers in the next couple of hours showers even a couple of thunderstorms and then western portions of the hill country and again a little further uh, to the east couple of showers out in the detectable rain out there in Bandera and uh, maybe a few little showers there on the uh, south side of Bear County, northern Pleasanton, excuse me, northern Atascosa County, north of Pleasanton. And this is all just the clutter, but you know, not much out there as of right now. Later on today, different situation. Storm Prediction Center does have the uh, slight risk, the yellow area for northwest Bear County, right along I-35, back down toward Uvalde. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat with this uh, inch diameter or larger hail and then also some high winds associated with it. And then the marginal risk in the green shaded area, which covers you know, a good portion of our viewing area, is under the risk for some uh, some sort of severe weather later on today. Here's the uh, computer model. And again, it's got these showers and thunderstorms developing out there to the west, working their way into some of our western counties throughout the morning hours, then sort of dying off a little bit. We keep a few showers scattered about here and there. And then the uh, heavier thunderstorms start to redevelop out in northern portions of the hill country later on today and then work their way down to the uh, basically east to southeast throughout the late afternoon early evening hours right around dinner time and we'll continue to keep a couple of showers around then even after that now as far as temperatures it's going to be a little bit cooler today not cold cold slightly below normal then we get a little chunk of this cooler air up north of us coming in here for the weekend that's behind the the more significant front that we've been talking about which will move through then tomorrow night late 72 today at noon just a couple of showers maybe a few thunderstorms primarily out to the west this morning and then we'll see more of them trying to develop in the hill country and then working the way down pretty much into the I-35 corridor, the chances for, of that later on today. 76 for high temperature, so about 10 below where it was yesterday. And then again, some of those storms may be on the strong to potentially severe side. Tomorrow, more showers, couple of thunderstorms. Temperatures go back up into the mid 80s, so about five above normal, lots of humidity. Then the front moves through. We'll still have some rain in behind that front on Saturday, but only 65 degrees. Windy on Saturday. Much cooler mornings down in the low 50s then all the way into the first part of next week. Well, that'll be refreshing. Yeah, it'll be real nice in the morning. A nice break. We'll take it. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 553. And still ahead, a good boy over at the San Antonio Humane Society looking for a brand new home. We're going to tell you about Topaz coming up.
But first, we're going to tell you about your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, seven, one, Fireball five. Daily four, one, eight, zero, eight, Fireball two. Cash five, four, six, nine, 26, 30. And Lotto Texas, three, 16, 23, 29, 48, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 13, 30, 33, 45, 61, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Good luck. As we wrap up this half hour, we want to tell you about a pet needs a home over at the San Antonio Humane Society. This is Topaz, a handsome year and a half old retriever mix, friendly and happy as can be. Well, we have video this morning too. He has a beautiful smile. Can't wait, although Topaz a bit fearful of leashes. The sensitive guy just needs some treats and gentle pets to distract him while you place the leash around his neck. Once it's on, he walks nicely and loves to explore. He's a really good boy and can't wait to find his forever home. For more information on this pet and more, call 210-226-7461 or visit sahumane.org. Very good boy. April National Autism Awareness Month that more than 3.5 million people in the U.S. are on the spectrum. Ahead on GMSA, we'll look into what you may not know about autism. Trans Sky, let's see how things are looking out there as we approach the top of the hour. Heavy traffic at 410 at Rolling Ridge, especially coming at our camera. A little shake to the camera and a few more headlights coming at you at 410 and Jackson Keller. We have a traffic traffic update coming up in a matter of minutes. Stick around. Be a hope and more people will hop on for the ride. Good morning, I'm Stephen Cavazos and coming up this morning on GMSA, how they hope you can get on the road to success with their fifth annual virtual job fair. A local organization pushing for bike safety in San Antonio amid an increase of injuries and deaths with cars. We'll learn more about the plan they propose. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at about 70 degrees right now. We are expecting some rain, but I'm excited about slightly cooler temperatures. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Happy Thursday. It is April 15th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a good week so far. And we're expecting a cooler weekend. That's right. And a chance of rain is still being mentioned in the forecast. Mike Osterhage is here with more on that. Yeah, we got it before we get to the cooler weekend. Got to get through tomorrow. Today is actually going to be a little bit cooler than it has been the past couple of days. A slight little front is going to uh, keep temperatures down. Well, actually about 10 degrees compared to what it was yesterday because it got hot again yesterday up in the mid 80s. A lot of clouds, a lot of humidity, kind of same old song and dance we've had uh, every day this week. And also uh, maybe a couple little uh, sprinkles around the area. Temperatures, everybody is way, way up there. Del Rio 77 right now. And you're going to be on the lookout, first of all, around Del Rio for some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms to uh, pop up later on this morning. There's a couple of them way over in the mountains of Mexico already. We've got a few little what's being picked up on radar right now, which is not much. There may be, uh, you know, one or two little sprinkles here and there. Sam said he's seen some of the uh, spots on some of the trans guide cameras, but then out there in the mountains of Mexico, those are continuing to develop those showers and uh, haven't seen any lightning strikes detected yet, but be on the lookout for that in Valverde County and then in our western counties later on this morning. Then we'll get another batch of showers and thunderstorms developing, and that's what's going to prompt or what is prompting the uh, Storm Prediction Center to have us in the slight risk for some severe storms. The yellow area, I-35 corridor down in toward Valley, northwestern Bear County, and then the green is a slightly lesser chance to see something severe. Large hail, inch diameter or bigger hail, is going to be the biggest threat with that and also some high winds. And as far as the allergens, oak, yep, still on the high side but it didn't move all that much from the previous day's reading. Temperatures pretty much steady all morning long. It's going to be breezier this morning, and then winds will ease a little bit later on today. Notice how temperatures don't move all that much this morning because of that front kind of moving on in here, and we'll only make it to roughly the mid-70s later on today with more showers and a couple of thunderstorms. Heat and humidity go back up again tomorrow, and then back down substantially by the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, here is Samuel King. What's the latest, sir? Uh, good morning, Mike, and good morning to you out there. Things flowing relatively smoothly. This is a view from I-35 at uh, San Marcos, and you can kind of see a little bit of a haze there, a little bit of mist as we take a closer look at this uh, area here on 35. Traffic uh, flowing well, though, but that's just something Mike was talking about, something you'll have to uh, watch out for. 
for throughout the morning. Looking at the map uh, so far, uh, so good at the moment. We had uh, some incidents overnight, but things have uh, cleared out for now. So your travel times mostly in the green, except for 281 coming all the way in from Belverde is 27 minutes, a fairly normal traffic time this time of morning. 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels into downtown, 24 minutes from on I-10 from Bernie. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Sam. New this morning, one man is thankful his injury wasn't worse after a rogue bullet hit him in the back. Police say it happened around 2.30 this morning outside a Shell gas station near 35 in Malone. They say a man was driving when he heard gunshots. Police say the bullet hit the driver's window, tire, and trunk. They even say one went through the trunk, through the back seat, and into the driver's seat. The driver only had a bruise on his back because the bullet was able to slow down. Police are still searching for the suspect in the shooting. The 5th annual virtual job fair kicks off later this morning and the company hopes to get more people on the road to success. Right now the company has thousands of employees but they hope to bring on more as they anticipate an increase in riders this year. Stephen Cavazos is live outside at VIA headquarters with what you can expect. Good morning Stephen. Hey, good morning, Stephanie. Well, VIA does plan to make some improvements on several of their key routes that will increase frequency and, of course, reliability. And they're expecting more people and riders later this year, which is why they're wanting to hire more people to, to meet that demand. Now, some of those jobs include mechanics and bus operators, and the company will provide paid training for those new drivers. And those classes begin every two weeks, and no experience is required. But mechanics should have three years of experience or education. Now, right now, the company has currently 2,000 employees and more than 1,000 bus and van operators and over 260 vehicle maintenance workers. Applications are currently being accepted online. You can always head over to our website at ksat.com for more information. Now, that event is going to be kicking off at 9 this morning and run till noon. Of course, all you need it to log on is just your phone or a Zoom application. And once you do so, you'll have an opportunity for those job opportunities, that is. And you can always, again, head over to our website at ksat.com for more information. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. To the pandemic, local health officials report 252 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and six more deaths. Local hospitals say nearly 200 people are being treated for the virus. Meanwhile, the Texas Department of State Health Services said nearly 622,000 people have had at least one dose of the vaccine. More than 392,000 people are fully vaccinated in Bear County. And speaking of vaccinations, the city of San Antonio launched a wait list for anyone 65 and older yesterday to help people get appointments. We have a link to register online at kset.com. Those who do register will receive a confirmation email and will be contacted by a local provider. City officials say appointments may take several weeks until more vaccines become available. People can also register by calling 311 between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. daily. 606 right now more traffic authority coverage as more students head to in person classes. School zones are a bit busier again and that's led to questions from viewers for our SAQ segment. Our Samuel King is here to answer those questions and Samuel viewers wanted to know about speed limits and enforcement. Yeah, two very important things not only for drivers but for the pedestrians or students who are in those school zones. So Lisa for one asked why are there different school zone speed limits? She mentions Judson Road it has four lanes of traffic. She says Wood Middle School has a 30 mile per hour school zone. Some are 20 to 25 miles per hour. And Troy asked what is going on with school zones. It's like everyone just ignores them. And when he slows down, he's almost ran over. So we'll start with Lisa's question. Speed limits in school zones are usually 20 miles per hour, as you see there. But there are some exceptions. Some could be as low as 15 miles per hour in some residential streets and up to 30 miles per hour if a school is on a busier road. Paul Berry with the San Antonio Public Works Department says the default speed limit on those roadways is often higher, so dropping it too much could make for an unsafe situation. The most important thing to remember about a school zone is it's about safety, and it's for safety of the children walking to and from school. And so that's why we just want people to slow down. 
While it is usually a municipal government that sets the limit, it is up to police to enforce it. SAPD says it enforces school zones depending on the choices of a given school district, and they do strongly encourage citizens to be mindful when driving into school zones each day. And Barry says you should treat all school zones as active during the school year, even if most of the students in a particular neighborhood are learning remotely. And of course, follow all of the signs and traffic rules, even if police aren't around. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. The death of cyclists in San Antonio is pushing a movement for change to help protect cyclists and pedestrians around the Alamo City. A volunteer group called Activate SA came up with a Bike Master Network plan to create safe routes to many destinations around San Antonio, such as the Medical Center, Airport, and downtown. One member of the organization says the city opening back up is an important time to discuss these changes. He says the pandemic nudged many more people to hop on a bike, but the fear is of if nothing is done to protect them, it could lead to more deaths. People are going out and drinking and they're getting in their cars and driving and it's a perfect storm of more cyclists on the road and people who are driving under the influence. These ideas will head to City Council and if they are approved, the people of San Antonio will vote on a bond proposal. City of San Antonio is asking for input to help make a section of Culebra Road safer for cyclists, pedestrians, and drivers. You can participate in one of three virtual community workshops next week. The city says these workshops will support a study evaluating 13 miles of Culebra from Loop 1604 to I-10. The goal is to reduce serious injuries and deaths along that stretch of road. There are two workshops in English, another in Spanish. We have a link to register on our website at ksat.com. Former City Councilman Greg Brockhouse answered questions last night for night two of our mayoral forums. Now this will be the second time he faces incumbent Mayor Ron Nuremberg in the race. Brockhouse touched on several topics, including the pandemic, saying he disagrees with mandatory mask wearing. He's taking a stance on the proposition that could remove collective bargaining between the city and police union. Brockhouse says he disagrees with the measure, but he also says bad police officers should be fired. Leadership moments like this call for just taking a stand and telling people where you are. I support the police department. I think we should fire bad cops. I also believe that we should worry about more than just those bad officers over the last 10 years. <laughs> we should worry about the young men and women of color. They are best. Brockhouse also says he does not believe San Antonio is systemically, systemically racist, then went on to say he believed we have a system that needs to be fixed to respect and honor people of color. Brockhouse also spoke about CPS Energy and what he thinks needs to happen following February's winter storm. You can take a look at the entire forum right now on KSAT.com. And tonight you will get a chance to hear from mayoral candidate Denise Gutierrez Homer. The forum will start on KSAT at 630 this evening and it will begin on KSAT.com at 7 p.m. Right now, it is 11 minutes past the hour. We're at about 70 degrees. And it was a tough loss for the Spurs. We're going to hear how the silver and black were just outmuscled by the Raptors. Having a plan in place can make a big difference during an emergency. After the break, we'll hear from a local doctor who says you should have a plan when it comes to your kids. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at about 70 degrees right now. We are expecting slightly cooler temperatures today, but it'll warm up again tomorrow. We're going to check in with Mike about all these changes. Six fifteen. Welcome back to GMSA on your Thursday. Have a plan in place. That's what a local doctor is telling all parents to do. Dr. Jindy Haug with the Children's Hospital of San Antonio says there are a few things to know if you have kids. First, be sure to take your child to a children's hospital or emergency room should there be an emergency. Second, know where the ER is and how you're going to get there. Third, know who you are going to ask for help if you need it. Dr. Haug says these steps will make jumping into action a little easier. And it's one less thing to think about so that you can focus on your child and helping to comfort them. And you don't have to worry about where should I go? What should I do? Dr. Haug says nobody likes to think about an emergency when it comes to our kiddos, but planning ahead of time can help your child if one happens. Read more at KSAT.com. And we're expecting sprinkles today. So how are the roads looking so far, Samuel? 
things so far so good this morning but we know traffic does start to build at this time of hour so we'll keep a close eye on it looking at some travel times quickly is 28 minutes if you're coming in from the Pleasanton area on 37 to downtown San Antonio 19 minutes as we mentioned coming in from Cashville fairly normal and 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle looking at the map here a lot of green and that's what we uh, like to see on a morning uh, like this even up to the east in New Braunfels and Seguin and out west toward Castroville looking fine this morning. Taking a look at 1604 on the uh, northwest side, 11 minutes uh, each way between Bandera and 281. Uh, we know that here in this area does start to build here uh, in the next uh, sort of 45 minutes or so. So that's something to keep in mind if you uh, head out each day, of course. And taking a look at Trans Guide, this is 35 at San Marcos. Traffic flowing well, but you can kind of see the uh, sort of mist and clouds uh, there this morning. So something just to look out for and watch out for as we move through the morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, let's roll that school bus. Yes, indeed. And as you are hitting the roads this morning, um, like Sam's been talking about, there's a little bit of, you know, maybe some mist out there. Damp roads, just kind of you know, take it easy. 70 this morning. Temperatures are going to be fairly steady. And also wind is going to pick up slightly this morning. It's going to be kind of on the breezy side. A few showers and a couple of those storms out to the west. And then later on this afternoon, uh, about mid 70s, so we're going to be roughly 10 below where we were yesterday, and there will be a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms out there. Some of those may be on the stronger side, especially as we get into the late afternoon and then uh, dinner time hours. Great picture. You got blue bonnets, you got a longhorn. What else do you need? That's fantastic. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, out there by the airport, uh, it almost looks like there's a little sheen on the road perhaps by the airport. We've had a, really not much out there as far as any rain. As you can see, there's just little uh, specks here and there and kind of zooming on in. Yeah, one or two of them, you know, around the area. That's what's heavy enough to be picked up on radar. Now out to the west, these showers, these areas of rain out there in the mountains of Mexico have continued to sort of fill in. These lines are starting to develop, develop a little bit more and working their way up to the north. So right around Del Rio, you're going to have to watch out for uh, some of those showers. We're not seeing any lightning yet, but there are indications that we will see some of those uh, develop into storms later on this morning. And then this afternoon, we'll have a disturbance moving on through here, and that's going to touch off some thunderstorms that potentially could be severe. And there's the slight risk yellow shaded area. Large hail, one inch diameter and bigger than that, is uh, the most likely from these storms. And then also some high winds, but hail is going to be the biggest threat. And then the marginal risk in the green area. So most of our viewing area is under some sort of a risk of severe weather later on today. All right, yesterday did get up to 87 degrees. We had a little more sunshine than expected, and that really helped to pump those temperatures up there. 93 Catula got up to 96 in Laredo, but about 10 below that later on today. So we'll actually be slightly below normal today. We had 76 for a high temperature here in town and even some low and mid 70s all around the metropolitan area today. Still going to be humid, though. We may see a slight drop this afternoon, but we're still seeing a lot of these dew points well above 60 today. Then the humidity just comes back on in here overnight and into tomorrow. It's really going to be getting steamy tomorrow with these uh, upper 60s and low 70s for these dew point temperatures. However, notice the drier air starting to work its way in here. And that's going to be by about dinner time tomorrow and then late tomorrow night. And that's when the front's going to move through here. Get rid of the humidity and pull in some cooler air for Saturday and Sunday and actually into the first part of next week. We'll get rid of the humidity, so that's going to allow low temperatures to be cooler as we go into the weekend in the first part of next week. 72 at noon today, a couple of showers, a couple of storms, mainly out to the west and then later on this afternoon, 76 high temperature showers, a few thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the uh, the stronger side, potentially severe large hail again. Biggest threat tomorrow. 85 again, lots of humidity and then 65 on Saturday. Big change, very windy on Saturday behind that front. Still a few uh, leftover showers around here. Low temperatures will be in the low 50s as we go into Sunday morning and first part of next week. I've got to get through today and tomorrow first. I've got the sprinkler ready to go. Uh, as soon as I get everything set up, that's when the storms are going to move in. So maybe I won't have to turn on the faucet on even once. Wash your car, too. Wash my yes. car, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All so this will bring us luck. Just to help out with the rains. <laughs> yes. We can do it. It's kind of a modified rain dance. 620 on your Thursday. And a new CDC report finds keeping the middle seat open on some airplanes can reduce passenger exposure to COVID-19 by more than 50%. Find out more in today's GMA First Look.
Panera, we make dinner easy and cheesy. Order our delicious mac and cheese for dinner tonight with delivery or pickup only at Panera. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. Start your day with Crest 3D White, and from mocha chinos to Merlot, your smile will always be brilliant. Crest 3D White Brilliance, 100% stain removal, 24-hour stain resistance to lock in your whitest smile. Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Fight fleas and ticks with Seresto. Eight months continuous protection against fleas and ticks. It's effective, convenient. Seresto. Keep playing. More on Seresto.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the question on the mind of every air traveler. When it comes to filling the seats of a plane, how full is too full? The CDC is reigniting the debate over middle seats, releasing a new report suggesting that having passengers sit farther apart on planes could help reduce exposure to viruses like COVID-19 from 23 to 57 percent. The CDC found an effect even without the mask, but it wasn't the real world. And obviously when people are in flight and they eat, they remove their mask and they may not put it back on immediately. So therein is the danger is that they sit there, they may talk to their uh, colleague, their family, and they may generate particles. So if we take this and actually put masks on them and run the study, imagine what, could it, what we could find here. We'll have much more on this study, plus a closer look at the rising airfares coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami. The Spurs were back on the court to play to the Toronto Raptors, but instead of playing in Canada, they faced off in Tampa due to the pandemic. Spurs were able to stay in the game by making some good shots. Derek White led all scores with 25 points. Patty Mills added 23, but as Coach Pop said after the game, the Spurs were not physical enough and lost key battles near the rim. Raptors would muscle their way to a 117-112 win in Tampa. Here's what Derek White had to say. We made shots, but... Uh, a bunch of the little things we just didn't do well enough to get a win. I mean, offensive rebounds, second chance points, stuff like that. Start the game to the end game. That really cost us. Spurs come back home for a home game. Uh, they play the Portland Trailblazers at the AT&T Center tomorrow night at 730. But it would be a quick stopover in the Alamo City. The Spurs are preparing to play their next 10 of 14 games on the road. A tough schedule. And a tough loss last night. Yeah, go Spurs go. Time now 626 and about 71 degrees. We are 100 days from the expected start of the Tokyo Olympics, but with rising COVID cases in the city, Japanese officials are now saying canceling the Olympics altogether is not off the table. And then our next half hour, we're going to take a look at San Antonio's history of brewing beer. We will see how one person has been documenting that history. You might call it mischief or even a miracle. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say someone took aim at a driver right at this intersection, yet he walked away with just a bruise. I'll tell you more about it. Via's fifth annual virtual job fair kicks off today. Good morning, I'm Stephen Cavazos, and coming up this morning on GMSA, how Via hopes to bring on more people for the ride. Outside with live cam, more humidity, low clouds, but uh, the question is, is rain still on the way? Mike has the answer in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. It is April 15th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, we could use that rain, so it should be on its way and also a little cooler temps for today, which will be nice. That's right. Mike says a little front is going to be in the area. Yeah, so that'll hold us down in the 70s uh, as opposed to mid 80s like the past couple of days. Still humid and we do once again have a chance for rain and even a couple of uh, stronger thunderstorms later on today. We've had a couple of little sprinkles around the area this morning and it, uh, there were some Views there of 410. It almost looked like it may have been a bit, uh, a little bit of a sheen on the road. So a lot of mist has been kind of falling around here, and there's been a couple of drops on some of the cameras. So just kind of keep that in mind that the roads may be damp. Still plenty of humidity out there. The wind is out of the northeast at nine miles per hour, and uh, we've got a few little sprinkly showers around the area. Not much 
as you can see, there's a, been a few little specks here and there going through town. That's pretty much about it. Out to the west, this is where we are and been watching this for the past couple of hours as these have been developing out here just to the uh, over the river from Del Rio and sliding up to the north. No lightning is being detected as of yet, but notice how that's starting to kind of intensify ever so slightly. So in uh, Valverde County, north of Del Rio, right around Del Rio, you can watch out for that this morning. Some of those thunderstorms developing out there to the west. And then later on today, we'll get another batch of uh, storms developing. And those are the ones that are, uh, well, at least the threat is there for severe weather. Marginal risk in the green. Most of the area has some sort of a risk of severe weather later on today. And then that gets bumped up to a slight risk from northwest uh, Bear County, right on 35 into the hill country. Large hail, bigger than one inch diameter hail, going to be the biggest threat with that. And then also some high winds on top of that. Oak is still on the high side from yesterday's reading. The updated count is going to come out in about uh, an hour or so. And throughout the day today, some storms developing out to the west. A couple of little showers here and there. <clears throat> it's windier this morning. Winds will ease up a little bit today. Showers and thunderstorms, some potentially strong or severe, especially uh, San Antonio up and toward the hill country. Showers and a few more storms tomorrow. And it's going to get warmer, hotter, mid 80s, a lot of humidity. Then that big front moves through here tomorrow night. Coolest is down for the weekend. Still some rain on Saturday, but oh, maybe probably even a jacket in the morning by Sunday morning, believe it or not. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and really there hasn't been a heck of a lot out there this morning. No, not too much, uh, Mike. We had some uh, incidents overnight, but uh, things have uh, mostly calmed down. They do have this stalled vehicle. I just popped up reported on uh, 37 at uh, military, but it looks like a uh, traffic not being impacted too much at the moment. Let's look at uh, west side 410 had some construction overnight, so let's see, the, see how things look now. So five to six minutes between uh, Ray Ellison and State Highway 151 this morning. Looking at some other travel times, we mentioned uh, 37, so coming in from Pleasanton into downtown San Antonio, 28 minutes, 17 minutes from the south coming in from Lytle on I-35, 24 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10 this morning. And let's take a look at Transguide. This is 410 at Bandera. Traffic building a little bit, but flowing well as it is at 1604 and Bandera. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. A driver may be counting his blessings after dodging a bullet. San Antonio police say someone shot into his car overnight, yet he escaped with only a bruise. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened near Interstate 35 and Malone Avenue. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police are still looking for clues about that shooter. Well, that's right, they are. And right now, it sounds like they don't have any, many clues. They said the driver at first didn't even realize what happened, so he didn't have time to get a description of the shooter. But they say it was luck that he wasn't more seriously hurt. They say the bullet tore through his trunk, went through his back seat and into the front seat where he was sitting, yet it stopped short of causing him anything more than a bruise on his back. Police say that man told them he had just left a bar nearby a little after two this morning. He says he was at the light here at I-35 in Malone, waiting to pull into the Shell station when someone shot him. Now, when that man realized what happened, police say that he was able to pull into the gas station here and call for help. But again, no description on the shooter. And based on the man's injury, it sounds like he did not need to go to the hospital. Reporting live near just south of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, the Biden administration expected to announce sanctions against Russia for the country's involvement in the solar wind cyber attack and interference in U.S. elections. President Joe Biden expected to sign executive orders later today. The U.S. is expected to expel up to a dozen Russian diplomats from the country in addition to those new sanctions. A House committee approved a bill to set up a commission to study possible rep reparations from the U.S. government to its descendants of slaves. The bill was first proposed in 1989 and has been proposed every year since then. This is the first time it has made it to a full House vote. One economist says the cost of reparations could be $12 trillion. However, supporters say the bill is not about a check, but developing a structured response to historical and ongoing wrongs. Federal judge here in Texas says the federal government can take private land to build the southern border wall. The eminent domain case over the Texas family property started during the Trump administration. President Biden paused border wall construction when he took office, but immediately before hearing about the matter, the judge granted the government's 2020 motion to go ahead and take the land. 
A top Japanese official says the Tokyo Olympics could be canceled this year if the COVID crisis worsens in the country. That's according to CNBC. The Japanese capital city is currently seeing a big increase in cases after the government ended a state of emergency. The summer, summer Olympic Games were already delayed last year because of the pandemic. We are 100 days away from the planned opening ceremony of the Olympics. Australia joining the U.S. and NATO in withdrawing its forces from Afghanistan. Prime Minister Scott Morrison made the announcement today. He said the last Australian troops will leave the country in September. The U.S. has announced aims to withdraw our troops by September 11th, the 20th anniversary of the U.S. presence in that country. April 15th is usually tax day, but not this year. For all of us living in Texas, we have an extension to file our taxes until June 15th. The IRS says the extra time is due to February's winter storms. Even though you have two more months, many tax experts suggest filing early so you can get a faster refund if you're expecting one. Well, back here at home, a lot of people like beer, but one San Antonio man loves it. That's right. Charlie Stats has amassed such a large collection of advertising, bottles, cans, and other historic brew-related documents that he sold more than 2,000 items to the Pearl Brewery a couple of years ago. Since then, his collection has only grown. KSAT producer Penny De La Cruz has the story. For the last 45 years, Charlie Stats has been collecting memorabilia from his favorite beer brands, Pearl and Lone Star. His collection started long before he could even drink. When I was 13, that's what kids were collecting were beer cans. That was a popular thing back then. So like, you know, instead of baseball cards or comic books or Beanie Babies, and you would actually bring empty beer cans to school and trade the beer cans with your friends. In high school, he got a job at the Pearl Brewery. His collection expanded from beer cans to beer advertising collecting signs, ads, and even clocks. But he liked to keep his collection vintage, not venturing much past the 1970s. You know, in 1970, both breweries went from locally owned to corporation owned. And when they did that, you know, their, their logos changed. For example, the Pearl Beer logo went from script to block letters up until last year. A lot of that advertising just went kind of on the cheaper end, because these big corporate breweries at that point were now trying to save money on on advertising. Stats has a wide array of items showing the impact San Antonio beer has had spanning different eras, including the Civil War. Here's the bar tab book for the Minger Hotel. It has both Union and Confederate officers drinking in the in the Minger bar. Stats says he'd rather collect beer memorabilia than baseball cards. For him, it's all about the history. The great thing about collecting beer advertising is I've been doing this for 35, 40 years. Every month or every week, I run across something I've never seen before. Penny Dell Cruz, KSAT 12 News. The KSAT Explains team talked to stats for this week's episode. It's all about San Antonio's beer culture. You can stream KSAT Explains San Antonio as a brew town right now at KSAT.com slash explains or on the KSAT TV app on most streaming devices. VIA is hoping to get you on the road to success. The mass tra transit provider for the San Antonio metro area will hold its fifth annual virtual job fair today. Our Stephen Cavazos is live at VIA headquarters and shares why the company is looking to hire now. Good morning, Stephen. Hey there, Mark. Good morning. Well, VIA is planning to increase frequency and reliability on several other key routes, which is why they're wanting to hire more bus operators and mechanics in hopes to meet that demand of more riders later this year. Now, the company currently has over 2,000 employees and over 1,000 bus and van operators, as well as over 260 vehicle maintenance workers. Now, the company will provide paid training for those new drivers, and those classes begin every two weeks, and no experience is required. However, mechanics should have three years of experience or education. Now, the company will provide paid training for those new drivers. And again, those classes do begin every two weeks. And we, of course, will be having this information on our website. You can always head over there for more information at KSAT.com. But don't forget, the event does kick off later this morning at 9 and runs till noon. All you need to log on is either your phone or a Zoom application. And, of course, we will have more later this morning. But for now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. Time now is 640 and about 71 degrees. April is National Autism Awareness Month, and more than 3.5 million people are on the spectrum. After the break, what you may not know about autism. ASD. 
or Autism Spectrum Disorder, is a diagnosis that describes a number of different symptoms and behaviors. Every individual with autism is different, and symptoms can vary widely, including things you can't see. That aren't those externalizing overt behaviors like having, you know, maybe having tantrums or having a, a big collection of something um, or just, you know, not making any eye contact. More subtle things can happen too. There are no medical tests for autism. Instead, doctors use behavior and stimulus diagnostic tests. Children are diagnosed very early and can be as young as 18 months. The CDC reports boys are 4.5 times more likely to be diagnosed with ASD than girls. However, experts say this could be because girls are better at masking, where they suppress or hide their symptoms. We don't have a good understanding of what autism looks like in girls. There is no cure for autism, but early interventions may help kids thrive. Free evaluations are available in every state through the public early childhood system. Right now, researchers are working on new ways to give kids better lives. Vanderbilt University is developing a hormone-blocking drug that could improve socialization, stress, anxiety, and aggression. Experts still don't know what causes autism, but most agree that it's a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Red flags for parents include lack of verbal skills or response to being spoken to, repetitive behaviors or obsessions with a toy or item, trouble making eye contact or expressions, and if they haven't played pretend by 18 months. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 645. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King to see some traffic building up there on I-10. Yeah, I-10 at uh, Callahan there, and we'll take a look at some of the other Transguide cameras coming up, Stephanie and Mark. But we do uh, have a stalled vehicle. This is on the uh, southwest side, uh, Loop 410 at uh, Old Pearsall, but traffic still appears to be flowing well. Uh, reminder, TxDOT has a virtual public hearing beginning uh, this evening at 5 p.m. We're talking about FM 1560. That's uh, from Bandera down to Calabria west of 1604. They want to widen it from two to four lanes, add new bike lanes and sidewalks. And over the next two weeks, they want to hear uh, from the public. So if you live out here in this area of West Bear County, again, uh, 1560 uh, west of uh, 1604. If you use that road, uh, TxDOT does want your input. Uh, 1604, some delays starting to build a little bit, up to 13 minutes between Bandera and 281. And this is usually the time of day when we start to see uh, those delays. And now to Transguy, 35 at uh, Loop 410 looks fine, and 410 at Bandera traffic building, but at the moment, flowing well, guys. Good news there. Thank Br you, Samuel. Brings us to Mike's KSAT Connect picture and a, a caption with a question. Well, yeah, and I was going to say, I think the only one that can answer this question would be the folks living here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, do you have to be wild to have wildflowers in your front lawn? Not necessarily. <laughs> no, but those are very, very pretty. I take those in my front line. You said this looks like some over in your neck of the woods. Yeah, so. it really does. I'm going to drive by there and see if this is the house. Yeah, a great picture. There I love that. They're going to be like, why is Stephanie Cerna cruising uh, <laughs> back and forth in front of our house? house. <laughs> <laughs> looking for wildflowers. <laughs> anyway, uh, a lot of clouds hanging around this morning. Uh, don't be surprised if you run into a little bit of mist. There's hardly anything, if at all, showing up on radar in our vicinity right now in the metropolitan area. A couple little sprinkles have been uh, popping up here and there, but it's off to the west where those showers and thunderstorms are uh, starting to They've been developing all morning long since about 2, 3 o'clock this morning. No lightning is being detected as of yet, but those are probably going to continue to grow and uh, obviously working their way across the river in toward Del Rio. So you'll see some of those uh, heavier downpours there and probably some thunderstorms. A couple more developing down here around Eagle Pass. So out in our western counties where we're going to be watching for these uh, showers and some thunderstorms this morning. Then later on today, We'll have some more trying to develop up in northern parts of the hill country working their way down through the area. And so that's what's prompting the uh, severe threat. Large hail bigger than one inch diameter is the biggest threat with this marginal to slight risk, a higher risk from northwest San Antonio, northwest Bear County, along I-35 into the hill country later on today. And that's going to be again late this afternoon in toward dinner time. Humidity, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere remain very high above 60. It's humid out there goes down a little bit today uh, combined with the fact that temperatures will only be in the mid 70s later on today and then humidity is just going to come right back in here and tomorrow we'll probably have a little bit of fog to start off the morning as well some more showers around here upper 60s low 70s midsummer kind of humidity 
However, off to the west, there's the drier air and also cooler air, which is going to be moving on in here, and that's going to be overnight tomorrow night into Friday. Here's some of those thunderstorms trying to develop this morning, which this computer model is picking up. And then later on this afternoon, here comes the uh, other band, batch of showers and thunderstorms working their way down through the area. And those are the ones that are going to be prompting or are prompting the uh, severe threat out to in, well, San Antonio. I-35 up into the hill country and that's going to be later on this afternoon and then on into the early evening hours. Like I said, more rain tomorrow, hotter temperatures, and then we get the big front moving through for the weekend. 72 at noon today. A couple of showers, a few thunderstorms, mainly off to the west. Some of those thunderstorms and then late this afternoon, more going to be developing, working their way down into the area. 76 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow, Warm start again, mid 60s, upper 60s, some uh, mist and fog, a couple of showers, shower storms throughout the day, hot and humid, and then the front moves through. We'll still have rain on Saturday, but look at that, 65 and down in the low 50s. You may need a jacket if you're going to early church on Sunday. I think so. Some chilly mornings ahead there. Mm -hmm. And again, if you see anybody from the morning team prowling around your house, we're again just looking for wildflowers. A lovely young lady with dark hair. It's just stuff. <laughs> if she looks kind of like <laughs> Stephanie Cerna, it's about 10 till right now might and be. on your Thursday morning. <laughs> and learning science is very important for our kids, especially if they have dreams of landing a on a robot on Mars or curing a deadly disease. Tomorrow on GMSA, some simple things you can do to support science learning at home. Outside with live cam, waiting on the sun to rise. It's working on it right now. The news you need to know before you go is next. Someone tried but didn't succeed at shooting a driver. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say that that bullet stopped short of causing any major injuries. The driver was on his way to gas up here at I-35 and Malone when someone took aim at him a little bit after two this morning. The police say that the driver instead was able to pull into the gas station and call for help. They say that he told them he had just left a bar nearby with no problems. He says he thought about getting gas somewhere else but didn't feel safe there. As he headed to this different gas station at I-35 in Malone, someone took aim at his car. Police say the bullet tore through his trunk, went through his back seat and then hit the seat where he was sitting. Somehow he walked away though with just a bruise on his back. The police say the driver didn't even realize what happened at first until he felt a sting on his back. They say he did not have time to get a description of the shooter because it happened so fast. Reporting south of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A new type of physical therapy aimed for anyone, whether they're a veteran, a professional athlete, or someone with just a stressful job. I'm Max Massey. I'll explain later in the show. Right now it's 5 till 7. And traffic is picking up, but from this camera, does it look like there are any problems at this time, Samuel? No uh, big problems. Our travel time's looking good. 24 minutes from Bernie downtown on I-10, 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels. Have a couple of stalled vehicles uh, there on the west side, but not causing too many issues. And we are seeing our delays building on 1604 uh, eastbound there, down to 43 uh, miles per hour, even lower in some areas just past Bandera Road. Here's a look at Transky 90 at Nogalee. I had a stalled vehicle there earlier. Uh, that is looking fine. Mike, uh, let's send it over to you. Thanks, sir. And uh, we've had a couple little sprinkly showers around the area this morning, but as you can see, more developing out there to the west around Del Rio, north of Eagle Pass. We'll have to watch out, out in our western counties this morning for some of those uh, thunderstorms to develop. And we're at 70 right now, and we're going to be up to the mid-70s later on today. Thank you, gentlemen. Sounds good. We'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day.